This is not a laptop. This is classified by Lenovo as a mobile workstation. And if you go to their website, you can find mobile workstations are in their own separate category aside from their laptops. The idea behind a mobile workstation is that it's more of a desktop replacement intended for heavy workloads on the go. This particular workstation is a ThinkPad W510 from 2010. And at the time, this was Lenovo's most powerful small mobile workstation. The reason I say this is small is that in the same year, you could also get a significantly more massive ThinkPad W701 with a dual screen and Wacom digitizer. Man, that thing is huge. That's what she said. Although you still wouldn't want to put this workstation on your lap because this machine is heavy and produces a tremendous amount of heat. Yet the hinges are so incredibly stiff that you need two hands to open this monstrosity. It will even hold an angle when being held by the top bezel. That's because this particular version of the W510 is the rare touchscreen version, which, compared to other non-touchscreen models, has a thicker cover and stiffer hinge. This helps to prevent the screen from moving back when using the touchscreen. The specs for this model were extremely impressive for the time and still respectable today. For starters, the RAM could be upgraded to a maximum of 32 gigabytes. Just one year before, the ThinkPad W500 would have had a maximum of 8 gigabytes of RAM and sold with only 2 or 4 gigabytes of RAM. The CPU was also a massive jump in performance. The first generation i7 Q820 was a quad core processor, but it wasn't just a regular quad core. The years prior, Core 2 quad processor was a dinosaur compared to this one due to several advanced features that were added to Intel's new i-series processors. Intel brought back hyper-threading, which allows a single CPU to handle multiple tasks at once and makes one core of a CPU act like two processors. Since this CPU has four cores with hyper-threading, it acts like it has eight processors, or, as it's called, eight threads. This line of processors also introduced Turbo Boost technology, which allows a processor to run faster than the base processor's speed, helps the processor to run faster when performance is needed, and to be more energy efficient when it's not needed. Compared to the one year prior W500, which at best had a Core 2 Extreme processor, which was a dual core without hyper-threading or Turbo Boost, the new i7 had nearly quadrupled the performance. It's because of processor technology like this is why Intel needed to rebrand their entire line of processors. A decade prior, the fastest, most powerful processors were simply the ones with the fastest clock speeds. However, the adoption of these new superscalar processor designs meant that was no longer the case and processors with a slower base clock speed could still be more powerful than other processors with a faster clock speed. While other first-generation Intel CPUs came with first-gen integrated graphics, which was revolutionary because it could play 1080p videos without a GPU, this particular i7 surprisingly never came with integrated graphics. But that's okay because this computer has an NVIDIA Quadro FX8800M dedicated GPU, which can handle playing a video at a 4K resolution. Today, this is not that impressive considering a tiny blob of Roku can play a 4K video just as smoothly and with less power consumption. Considering this is from a time when 4K screens were not even something the average person could obtain, this is pretty impressive. Even at the time, this GPU was not considered that great at gaming since it was more intended to be used as a workstation GPU where accuracy and quality matter more than performance. Back then, 
this GPU would have been more for 3D modeling, animation and video editing. That being said, it does play Minecraft and other less demanding games quite well. This workstation also boasts an impressive combination of peripherals. On the port side, there are two options for video output. You could choose a display port or VGA to output to a second monitor. There are two USB 3.0 ports, which is 10 times faster than the USB 2.0. There's an eSATA port, a FireWire port, and a Wi Fi kill switch. There could have also been a smart card reader as an optional extra. On the starboard side, there's Ethernet, a CD read write drive that can be swapped with a secondary hard drive. There's a headphone jack, an express card slot, and an SD card slot. At the back, there is a telephone modem port and a USB 2.0 port. This device could also have a SIM card and WAN installed so it could be used on cellular data. On the palm rest, there is a fingerprint reader which you could use to log in. Next to the fingerprint reader is the Pantone color calibrator, which is helpful for graphic designers to set their color profile to ensure accurate color representation of the display. As over the course of a decade, the screen may become faded. If, for whatever reason, three USB ports aren't enough, you could buy a docking station, which has six additional USB 2.0 ports and two display and DVI ports. Unfortunately, this computer can only support one extra monitor, so you can only use one of these ports, although if you buy a one-year newer W520, you can plug in two extra monitors. The docking station mounts to a port at the bottom of the computer and uses a complex locking mechanism to make sure it can't be accidentally removed. When you want to remove your workstation, you just need to push the eject button and little pins will push upwards while the hooks at the bottom unlatch from the device. The keyboard on this device is also a lovely typing experience with a nice clicky key feel and good travel. Also, while the keyboard itself does not light up, it does have the Think Light, which is a light that shines down from the top bezel down on the keyboard. This computer is still decently snappy at basic daily tasks. Although it would probably run smoother if it were running on Linux, it has no trouble running the horribly bloated Windows 10. Even today, you can still get a new computer with similar or even worse performance than this one, although a new computer would be significantly more energy efficient and lightweight. Except, of course, New mobile workstations such as the ThinkPad P series or Dell Precision series, which will also consume tremendous amounts of power and have double or even quadruple the performance of this old one. This computer is still awesome in my opinion and marks a point in computer history where computers were no longer completely obsolete after three years. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you have a good day.